Howdy, everyone. It's me once again, the one and only Killer Rodan. So for today's video, I'm going to be talking about some anime, which honestly, I'm really slacking on folks come to think about it, because I like to talk about Japanese stuff, whether it's anime, giant monster movies, horror stuff, whatever, but I like talking about it, but especially when it comes to anime, I get really sluggish, really. But anyway, I'm going to be reviewing the third season of Sailor Moon titled Sailor Moon S. And yes, it's the season where we just get to see Chibi Moon playing a major part of the story. But here's the thing, though. Yeah, about that. This is the bastard version of the TV series. Oh, shit. Here we go again. Yep, here we are. By the way, it's not that the Japanese versions were never released on VHS tape, because they were. But they're just hard to come by. So the version I'm reviewing, of course, were on VHS tape, obviously. So there was that. It was also on TV, by the way, just so you know. And what the hell? What is this? What's going on here? Yeah, it's me. It's Mr. Mo it's Mr. Monkey. Damn it, Mr. Monkey. Yeah, that's bread. Bring that over here. Hey, hey, you listen. Oh man, you you just threw it away. You bastard. Ugh. Of course, the last time I spoke about this TV show was when I was talking about Deke Entertainment. That did a really, really shitty job at this show. It was like really restrictive and incoherent. Oh, gee, women do have sonic body parts. What do you know? They may have curves. Mm -hmm. Who knew? But don't you dare show it, though, huh? Oh, boy. And how dare they express themselves in their own way? Oh, my God. Whatever. Oh, yeah. Anyway. Yeah, it was so bad. It was really bad. And the version I'm talking about is from this company here, folks. And, yeah, just... They did the third season and fourth season of Sailor Moon. The one I'm talking about is, of course, Sailor Moon S. But that's the third season. But they also released a, the fourth season as well, by the way. And just so everyone knows, that I do own the Japanese versions of the first TV show, along with the third season as well. Yeah, the first and the third. So there's a... For now, anyway. So yeah, they are a bit more relaxed, this company that released this version. Yeah, they're a bit more relaxed on it, I guess you can say. But ultimately, they're still pretty strict on some stuff. By the way, this version was also broadcasted on Cartoon Network, by the way, at the time. So this was probably somewhere in the early 2000s at some point. And was well, somewhere around there anyway. So what I'm trying to get is that... Why there was some violence, but it was to some extent. Why there were some suggestive scenes, but there was to some extent. So yes, their censorship stuff was a bit more loose. I guess you could say to some ex to at least some extent. So yeah, if it got too violent, it was got too racy or whatever. It was still edited down anyway. So if there was any swearing, like saying "damn shit" or whatever. Oh, bitch. It's just, it's just any swearing was completely removed, at least from this version anyway. So, yeah, it's still pretty restrictive, at least to, in some kind of degree anyway. And it's just, that's, that's not good news in my book, folks, at all. That's not good news in my book. But I know a lot of people are more familiar with the Deke version of the show. A lot of people grew up with that quite often, really. So, yeah, they're more familiar with that, really. But... Just, again, as a reminder. But again, just a quick reminder here is that I'm just going to be strictly remaining to this version that they released. Again, on Cartoon Network, which I people are familiar with, of course. Unless you bought on the VHS tape copies from, like, a blockbuster or something. But anyway, of course, as usual, I do have to talk about the plot. So let's get into it, shall we? So here we go. In the third season, Sailor Moon S, there's a race to steal pure hearts in this one, folks. And to heal broken hearts as well. So we get to see the character, Amy. She's going to be an important figure in one way or another throughout the series, of course, which is fine. And, of course, we get Sailor Moon. Well, I guess she still goes to school and whatnot. Still wants to protect the world and help people, of course. That's still going on. Obviously, but she still has to go to school, of course. 
Uh, Chibi Moon is in this one, folks. Or she's known as Sailor Mini Moon in the American dub version. And yeah, we get the re get the rest of the characters, obviously. Uh, Uranus and Neptune and whatnot, because they have to help out in some way to uh, defeat a host of villains in here, I guess you would say. So, yeah. Uh, the main characters are here, they basically have to do what they have to do. Because the thing is that the Sailor Scouts have to do what they have to do. So let's just say that the scouts have to look after this professor's sinister plans and trying to stop them for uh, the minions, I mean, from doing whatever they're supposed to be doing. Because the professor will have their own kind of help, I guess you can say, and some kind of assistance, of course. So then something needs to be done if it gets too late. So before things get worse, as before they get worse and worse and worse. But yeah, that seems to be like the gist of it. And of course, Mini Moon is in here, like I was saying. Oh, Chibi Moon, whatever you want to go by. Yeah, it just turns out, yeah, it has something to do with the future and going with the past. Yeah, time traveling. Yeah, that makes this just makes this entire thing even more confusing when you think about it. That gets played into their overall story here. But okay, whatever. I'm sorry, I'm confused. So, Chibi Moon, what I mean, Sailor Mini Moon was sent from the future to the past to assist the Sailor Scouts because the enemies are pretty tough. But wouldn't this mean that she was always there to begin with? So, the one version of the timeline would have been overridden. Of course we have the room. I don't Wait, know. Some of them slow must... down. But Osagi, Serena, in the American dub, was the one that sent Mini Moon to the past, but... That would mean that she would no longer have that knowledge because that version of the of events was gone. Which, because that specific events was changed in a certain way. Oh no, I've gone cross-eyed. But that would imply the fact that a future mother, Osagi, wouldn't have to do that to begin with because it was changed at the uh, 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 be, uh, uh, um, then how was she, was she born unless this timeline she was born in this timeline then that would mean she would have chibi moon I mean she wouldn't have no memory of being sent to the past but that can't be right either because she actually had a physical letter give to a past self I mean the mother given the past self and, uh, 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 when that mean in that case the timeline would have just self-correct itself because of the cosmos and uh in, in in that case that would mean the letter itself that was brought to the past would have disappeared but i never got any of this kind of explanations in the dubbed version like at all so why wasn't this patched up or anything at least in this version i what why We are experiencing technical difficulties. Please stand by. We'll return to our program shortly. So, okay, anyway, like I was attempting to say here is that Professor is one of the villains in this in this season, along with a few others, of course. The Death Busters plan to promise rule the world by using this energy from the Pure Heart Presters from innocent people, of course. Obviously, Sailor Moon and the others must stop them from doing this kind of a thing. Because obviously, they can't be going around harming folks, like at all. They're not supposed to be doing that. So yeah, with the popularity of the first two seasons, like I was saying earlier, that was made by Deke. So of course, Sam had to be brought back somehow, in some kind of way, and that's exactly what happened. So that studio I just mentioned earlier a moment ago, which is of course an American studio, has stepped in to license further episodes and chosen to dub the series. Uh, and obviously, many of the original, okay, real well, original voice actors and actors from the Bassa version did not return. So if she sounds different, Sailor Moon and the others sound different, that's because we got brand new American voice actors and actresses for this season of course so yeah they pretty much rushed to 
to production to, pr to produce as many as 11 episodes to be recorded in in each four-hour session with a voice and actor and actress to read each line only twice. So yeah, the dubbing wasn't really not that great because of that. So they pretty much rushed it as a result of this. So yeah, editing this version was a total nightmare, folks. They claim that they were trying to keep close to the Japanese version as much possible when it comes to the voice acting, I guess you would say. And, or even the overall story, even though a lot of the context was, of course, going to be changed, of course, obviously. Dialogue changed. Characters' names changed, of course, for the American viewer. For the American viewers. And, of course, there's going to be a lot of the culture stuff that a lot of the American audiences will not understand, really. So there was that. So, of course, certain tweak-ups will have to be done because of that. So many of the contexts of the of the Japanese version were, of course, was going to be edited. So, yeah, there's lots of stuff that, like, random episodes will be inconsistently have been edited with well, because of the signs, because of how the money is used, like the Japanese yen was changed to American money. And then... Now, also, they deleted any, like, cultural s symbols or any cultural cultural statues that was strictly Japanese. Just anything that was s super specifically Japanese was edit edited out, which, of course, it's, it's, of course, is a wrong thing to do. That's really, they really crossing the line there, folks, if you think about it, because, yeah... It's kind of, it comes up to oppression. You're trying to oppress somebody else's culture. And a lot of this, a lot of this, I was like, like we said a moment ago, that was specifically Japanese, whether it's signs, statues, you name it, or a specific kind of like wording of the dialogue was completely removed because of that. Come on. Uh, Mr. Monkey, what are you doing right there? Oh, uh, boy. You stop slacking off. Just go and get. I mean, really, go and get. Oh, boy, you're just a pain in the ass, you know that, right? Uh, crap, I'm going to finish this up here. Which obviously makes a lot of American companies very hypocritical because all these Christians will complain about the culture being removed, but they will remove other cultures on top of that. Like, what the hell? So, anyway, like this, for example, like this was actually severely altered because of the Kenji, a.k.a. the, the language and whatnot had to be fixed, because a lot of the American viewers are not going to know what that is exactly. They're going to have no clue, unless you're well versed in Japanese culture, and yes, a lot of people are not going to be into that Japanese culture that much, despite the fact that this is an anime, after all, but gonna, a lot of people are not going to have no clue whatsoever, really. And just to be perfectly clear here, that's not me making any kind of excuses for anything. I'm just putting that out there. It just seems like very hypocritical that they would allow this kind of thing to occur. Obviously, it didn't stop there, like, at all. Scenes were zoomed in or put through the pan and scan process to eliminate anything like that, along with science, like I was saying all a moment ago. And then, to, make, to further make this even more stupid, all references to f Japanese food were eventually dropped, and literally any dialogue that would be reflecting on the snacks or whatever it was eventually altered to re to reflect on Japanese snacks instead of the Japanese food because I don't know that that was definitely done here. I mean, okay, granted, none of this is new at all because they done this with the first two seasons of course because any place that the characters would go to was actually obscured on purpose it was alternate obviously so any names of the streets the towns or what have you like any area they'd be going through with the names of the places they went like even the streets like i was saying was changed or not or just not mentioned at all in the dialogue of the characters Unless you personally went to Japan, you're not going to know what is what, really. So, unless you have, like, first-hand experience, I guess. But that's kind of the weird part, because if you had a passport to go that I had enough money to stay in Japan for a little while, 
you, you, you won't know really. So you can do that, but you can't learn about the places in, through a cartoon. That makes it even more hypocritical. That just seems really bizarre. Like, what the hell? <sighs> it, it's, it's just like these American studios are intentionally trying to keep people ignorant about someone else's culture. And this kind of thing is just frustrating. So, of course, obviously the storyline in the grand scheme of things is going to be heavily altered because of that. This is ridiculous. It's so ridiculous. It's dumb. Oh, boy. I don't think American people have the stereotype of being mad ignorant. This, this right here doesn't help. It goes right along and then that into that very stereotype. Which, of course, is, you shouldn't believe in stereotypes, obviously. I'm just saying. Ugh. Christ. Mr. Monkey. Damn it. What are you doing? Ugh. You're a bastard. You're a bastard. Yeah, even some scenes, if they're watching TV or whatever, it would have been altered, really. <sighs> oh, yeah, I remember the whole thing with the letter I just mentioned a little earlier. So, okay, when her, Serena's friends, even though her name's like Osagi, but whatever, when the, like, the character who played, who is Venus as a, as a RJ Ego and all the other characters, you know, her school friends, read this letter from the future, Queen Serenity, the future of Sagi, the joke, well, the quote-unquote joke here is that the queen, the future queen, I should say, yeah, there's like a whole kingdom in the future. There's this whole thing, really. But, okay, point being is that these, like I was saying with the whole Japanese language, the way it comes to the alphabet, there is like the kanji and all that. There's a, like, kind of like how in the United States, it's like curse of variety and all that jazz. It's kind of like similar to there. But point of the matter is that it's all scribbled out. It's like the word she's misspelled. But in the American dub version, they actually made fun of it. They actually made fun of the, the funny symbols. Yeah, they actually called it funny symbols as a stab towards the Japanese language. Which, yes, that's actually pretty racist. Making fun of the Japanese language? Like, what the hell? That seems insensitive, don't you think? Ugh, boy. Again, just trying to attack somebody else's culture. Oh, boy. They're just... Wow, okay. But, yeah. That's just really stupid. Okay, in case anyone is wondering, aside from the obvious reason, but... Why does this kind of thing bother me so much? Other than, you know, the obviously... Uh, ignorant stuff, of course, but when it comes to other people's cultures, let me provide you a bit more, I guess, point of view of what I'm trying to get out here. Yes, it has something to do with the whole LGBT plus community kind of a kind of a thing, of course. And yes, before anyone sees, says anything, sweet home Alabama, as I already say. So in, in the bastard version, they're pretty much cousins, you and yes, before anyone says anything, yes, the Bible does support incest. I mean, it would have to be between a man and a woman, but that's fine according to some people. Yes, obviously, it depends on which version of the Bible because there's been many denominations of Christianity over the years. And even then, there might be subsets of subsets of Christianity, of course. And everybody, a lot of these versions would be, of course, going to their own churches, obviously. So that's kind of a thing, though, because of the fact that they want to use this to pretty much support anything. And yes, that's actually true. That you can actually literally use this to support almost anything. And that's what a lot of people have done over the years. In this case, inbreeding. And yes, of course, I'm also referring to the fact that Adam and Eve, that like they are believed to be the first human people on Earth, and they were, they have kids, and they those kids had kids, and those kids had kids. Where do you think they came from? The same family. That's incest right there. Or even if you don't want to pay attention to that, you go to the whole Norse Ark. Even that was incest because God himself basically rebooted the whole human race and they started with Norse Ark family. Uh, but okay, more. And yes, depending on who you're asking, some Christians are okay with, with both the LGBT and incest. So somebody might be okay with the whole Elsa Honor thing, depending on who you ask. But getting slightly sidetracked side here is that, yes, this was removed because of some moral panic. Yeah, they believe that this whole thing here was 
having a lesbian couple in a show where someone could be damaging to the family. Unfortunately, this attitude is still a thing to this very day. Because, case in point, I've been ensnared with this LGBTQ cult. Your kids have been ensnared. And they've cut them off. You are in a cult. And in the name of Jesus Christ, I stand against this devil of hell, this LGBTQ cult in our country. How did that go for you? Did it work? There aren't any more gay people in the country, right? Let go of their minds. Let go of their families. Let go of our reins of government in this nation. You will not drag us into your pit. It goes into like a full-blown conspiracy. He seems to believe that there's some group out there who is secretly trying to confuse children and get them to bend to their will and build this group that will increase their power base and so on and so forth. That's what I'm reading from this, right? Am I reading this correctly? Like, why does this, does this bother you? Why does it bother you so much? I have no idea. <sighs> so close-minded. It, it doesn't make any sense, like, at all. I, I don't want to stay too much on this because I don't want the entire video to be just this. I'm just trying to bring up the fact that Yes, even in the later seasons, like the third season, Sailor Moon still has been severely censored. Like I said earlier, I mean, yes, some of it has been somewhat relaxed, sure, compared to the first two seasons, yeah. But still, this is the censorship is still there in some form of another, which doesn't make any sense, even in that regard. Well, what's the motivation here? I don't get it, like, at all. And so, of course, there's going to be massive plot holes in the storyline because of this. Hey, Mr. Monkey, aren't you supposed to be looking for work? What are you doing slacking off? That's all you're doing, just slacking off. Uh, boy, you, you need some help. Just go and get. No, really. Just go and get. Okay, well, whatever. Little asshole. But like I was trying to say here, folks, is that obviously they're trying to rework this entire thing because they want to put their own agenda towards it and act as if that, that someone else has their own agenda and so just put my skipping all the merit of each episode and just trying to add their own stuff to it which is odd when you think about it so yeah Salem on S premiered on uh on the United States June 12th of 2000 to, to August 1st of the uh, same year so, I mean, yes, eventually uncut versions was later released, obviously, like, like I showed away earlier in the video. But as the old saying goes, a uh, little too late. I mean, but it's, quite, it's quite too late, actually. The damage has been done, unfortunately. <sighs> yeah, I mean, you could buy it anyway, I guess. Sure, you can buy it anyway. It's not, you're gonna, you can go to eBay, Amazon, or what have you. Sure, it's, it's available on Blu-ray, like I showed earlier. But those versions, like I have, were released way later, maybe like 13, 14, or maybe, yeah, some, somewhere out there, almost two decades later, almost two decades later that the uncut versions, roughly around there, were later released. That's a long, long time. Uh, so, yeah, yeah, something like that. It's just quite a while is what I'm saying, is what I'm getting at, of course. It just seems ridiculous that this... How to be done. I don't know. Just, I don't know. Okay, if it had it my way, okay, let me keep the time travel aspect. Let's just say there's a bit in the future, there's a scene in the future of Silo or Jupiter, that, let's just say the, she's the one with the green lightsaber, okay, and she's getting surrounded by the, let's just say the far right, it could be an actual villain group in here, in Japan, in the future, and she gets killed off or whatever, and she was trying to train some kids on how to be Sailor Scouts, at least the next generation. Just marched up in there like they took over the government or whatnot, with some assistance uh, from the far right, I, I guess you can say. And she ended up, the uh, Sailor Jupiter ended up dying on Chibi Moon herself would be sent to the past because of Tuxedo Max, let's just say that. And of course, Sailor Moon herself could be like, let's say she's writing this big old thing. She's trying to get away from these cri from these criminals, so to speak. And she gets double-crossed because some of them could be like lying to her and whatnot and just pretend to be her friend. But yeah, the, what I'm saying here is that 
get, gets portrayed by their own government. Sarah Scott's, I mean. But what I'm saying is that you could easily just use this as an opportunity to expand the universe of Sailor Moon. Because instead of just rewriting everything, just what they basically did, they rewrote the dialogue, rewrote the scenes, re-altered the, the scenes and whatnot. You could have just done your own, like, kind of spin-off kind of thing yeah. and whatnot, and done your own, kind of like what Star Wars did, have their own expanded stories and lore and whatnot. You could have done that here. Is what I'm saying. And maybe the Sarah Scotch from the past could have trying to prevent the gloomy future or something. I don't know. There's like so many things could have done. Yeah, I would accept that. Just do their own little show, have their own take on this series, and just add on to what's already there. It's just, just simply reworking literally everything from the ground up when you think about it. But I guess that would just require too much effort. I mean, if Star Wars gonna have the own have its own lore, Star Trek gonna have its own lore and whatnot. Why would this be an exception? I don't know. So yeah, folks, it just seems like there's, there's so much to go down here. There's so much to go down, even especially if the superhero stuff, but in this case, superhero and stuff is really popular nowadays. Uh, the Marvel universe has some a lot going on for it, and DC. Movies attempt to do that. So why, what? This doesn't seem much of a stretch. Why would it? I don't know. Whatever. It makes no sense. Like I said a moment ago. And Mr. Monkey, how many times do I have to tell you to go get a job? What are you doing, slacking off? Yeah, you're just slacking off. You're just, what the? What are you doing? Oh uh, boy, I don't know what you're doing, man. Just go and get. All right, just go and get. You're just a damn slacker. You weirdo. That's what you are. A damn weirdo. Stop bugging me, okay? You keep wasting food. Oh, what's this? Hey, you, you found something. Okay. You, you found something here. All right. Are right, you going to grab... Oh, man, leave that alone. That's not... That doesn't... Oh, you just ruined it. That doesn't belong to you. Oh, uh, boy, just flip me off again. He's a little rascal. Christ, this guy. Anyway, like we was trying to say here, folks, is that... Yes, of course, there's going to be continuity problems. Obviously, when it comes to this kind of stuff. Yes, obviously, there's like a lot of characters to deal with here, and you, yes, this entire thing could become needlessly complicated if not handled properly. But unfortunately, the way that these characters are written in this version of the show is that it's just like not, there's not much care to it really when it comes to the tones of dialogue. I mean, yes, the script for the bastard version. Versus the script for the Japanese version, of course, it's going to vary because a lot of the stuff's going to be changed and just flat out altered. Because, yes, like we were saying earlier, it's a cultural thing. What's more well known in Japan may not translate that well compared to what the audiences in the United States w would get, I guess. Because in the United States, of course, in America, it's supposed to be like a cesspool of multi culture things, even though despite the fact, you could always argue that maybe culture-wise, maybe America has its own thing going on as well. When you think about what's in itself, doesn't necessarily have to be a bad thing, obviously. Everybody has the right to have their own culture, their own identity, or whatnot. That in itself doesn't necessarily have to be a bad thing, of course. So, yes, of course, the thing is that will the American audiences over here understand what's going on in this anime because it's a very Japanese thing. But this is like a very superhero, I mean, excuse me, it's heroin kind of a thing. Anyway, a lot of people nowadays are very into these kind of like comic book, superhero and stuff anyway. Okay, so in this case, manga, because this series originally started off as a manga series, which gained some popularity, then it was turned into a a popular anime show, and then there was, like, movies that followed afterwards, of course. But that's only because the, just like the American studios and whatnot over here, they, they want to make sure if the comic book, or in this case, manga series is popular, then they will adapt it. Kind of like what happens with, you know, Superman, Captain America, Wonder Woman, and all that. Same kind of logic there. So, that, well, that's what happened here. It just became really popular. And what the hell? Oh, okay, you, you're obviously not listening, Mr. Monkey. I got something for you. Yeah, here. This is for you, all right? Here you go. Yeah, you prick. All right, let's just wrap things up. Just, wow. Okay.
whatever. Yeah, this is driving me up the wall. It is so bad. It's so bad. This is... Oh, boy. I mean, even if you want to argue, it may not be as cringy as the first two seasons, sure, when it comes to the bastard versions of this show. Maybe it's not as cringy. Maybe. But it's, it's still not very good. No, it's still not very good whatsoever. And the thing is that I wanted to basically get to this as soon as I can, of course. I know in my previous video in regards of the series, with this version of the series anyway, is that it took me too long to get to the season two. So I made a promise to myself that if I want to talk about the third season, I would not take as nowhere near as long to get to the second season to the third season. So I just wanted to do the third season as in a much, much, much shorter time because to get to the second season, it took me like, what, a year? So yikes. I didn't, I didn't want to wait that long again. I did not want to wait that long again to talk about the third season here. Because obviously that's the thing there. You're not going to be exactly really excited to talk about shit. This is what this is. It's, it's, it's shit. It's really bad. Oh boy. I mean, yes, unfortunately, for a lot of people, this was their first experience to Sailor Moon. This was their introduction to Sailor Moon. And a lot of people just want to stick to this because this is because of nostalgia. Oh, Christ, that's this that word again. So a lot of people just make all kinds of excuses, just want to stick to this because this is what they grew up with. Even though the more the original version, the Japanese version of this, could be way more mature and that it's not exactly super kid friendly. I mean, yes, okay, granted, the standards for child programming in Japan versus over here in America is is vastly different, of course. I mean, yes, we would argue that over there in Japan is a bit more tartable in some ways, considered what's allowed if something for kids versus for here. I mean, yes, over here obviously is way, 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 way more strict and compared to the way it was or it is in Japan. And yes, that's that's the only thing that censorship on what it, what is accepted for kids and whatnot is, is vastly different over here than it is over there. Obviously. Oh boy. Just gotta clear the air a little bit on that. And then the whole thing I was saying earlier with the whole dark future. I, like I was uh, like I suggested that they could do to prevent it, like mini moon and all that. I guess some chibi one, I guess. Yeah, it's, it's sort of like better make it out alive to go back to the past to prevent a dark future. Uh, prevent it, I mean. But yeah, just like I, that's like a lot of pressure. What I'm getting at is that in this version that was released, I felt like there's, there's no suspense. There's really no suspense in, in in the in the bathroom version. In this one, the season three, there's like no suspense. <sighs> But my yeah, one of my biggest complaints is that it felt the way the way that the script was, was written for the story of the characters, this entire thing just felt like it was written up as way too conveniently. Is what I'm trying to get at. It felt like it was obviously aimed for children. Again, I know the strict rules for the strict policies for kids and whatnot was could be changed, of course, and that obviously depends on the age group. Obviously, maybe from like. People who are under six, I think maybe somebody from who is eight years old or two yeah. or twelve. I mean, it could, of course, depend on the programming on what they're aiming for, obviously. But or someone in their late teens, of course, it depends on the demographic. Obviously, I, I know that. I don't get me wrong. It depends who they're aiming for, uh, of course. So it, it could be a bit, a bit flexible, depending on who they're aiming for and depending on how the subject matter is handled. Of course, I, I realize that. It depends on all on the more different factors, like I just mentioned a moment ago. But in the grand scheme of things, the way that this show is handled, in, in this version anyway, is terrible. I feel like there's no risk, really. There's nothing really, uh, there's nothing suspenseful, like at all, whatsoever, unfortunately. I just didn't like how it was done. All right, I guess let's just wrap it up here, folks, because nothing here was actually properly done whatsoever like at all so yeah this was definitely the dub in here wasn't particularly good the voice acting wasn't was actually not good at, a, at all the dubbing wasn't particularly great really i thought the voice acting was kind of bad really 
not the absolute worst like I've heard sometimes when it comes to anime, but yeah, it's still pretty uh, sub poor. Yeah, I mean, yes, I know, I realize that this alone deserves its its own video because when it comes to dubs versus subs, it's like an entire debate for the anime community. A lot of people, a lot of people would rather listen to the the original audio. And I mean, yes, okay, there are some good, uh, good, uh, good voice acting when it comes to the American voice acting. Of course, some of the voice acting in American dubs is actually pretty good. But I mean, yes, of course, a lot of people would prefer the original audio, which in some ways I can understand, and that's fine. That in itself is fine, I suppose, because I can be the same way a lot of times. If something is intended to be a certain way, leave it alone. Don't don't bother it. Don't bother with it whatsoever. Let it be. That's, that's how I am in a lot of ways. Because if something is intended to be a certain way, don't change it. Don't fix it. Don't do anything to it. If it ain't broke, or you know you know how that old saying goes. Leave it alone. Leave it completely alone. If it's not broken, why are you going to just go mess around with it? It makes no sense. But yeah, like I was saying, when it comes to the dub and subbing and whatnot, yeah, those people out there who don't mind watching the dubbed version, I mean, when it comes to the dubbing, some of it is actually pretty good, actually. Don't get me wrong. Some of it is actually quite good. But that's only because of the fact that it has gotten better over the years. Especially way back when, when anime was getting popular and whatnot, the dub was, oh my, just, wow. Oh my god, it's so bad. Unfortunately, this is definitely one of those cases where the dubbing, it wasn't, wasn't particularly great. And like we were saying earlier, a lot of people just want to stick to the original, well, the Basel version, in a way. Because of the fact that this is what they want to watch. We don't want to stick to watching because it reminds them of better, better times, really. Oh boy. Just live in ignorance bliss and whatnot. I just want to get it. Just live in ignorance bliss because, oh yeah, no, the whole thing with nostalgia. They just want to live back then. Back then, they want to recreate what I, or made their lives so so happy back then. Like ignorance bliss. Like things were a lot more simpler back then. Things were a lot more easier. They had no responsibilities. You just had to go to school, maybe hang out with friends, and just come straight home that's it you, you had nothing to do life is more complicated now and whatnot life is more crazy life is more chaotic you have lots of, we have responsibilities maybe you have to pay rent maybe you have those a mortgage to pay off and then maybe you have a kid or two and that could be stressful right there maybe a first maybe a first time parent and not being a first time parent can be pretty stressful all right just okay just i don't know just I don't know, maybe, maybe it's, I know it may seem like I'm being harsh here in some ways because it becomes nostalgia. I'm not really one of those people that really latches onto that, like, at all. But what I'm saying is that I know a lot of people want to stick to the, to the version that they grew up with because they're so used to it. And they have, this is what, like we said earlier, this was their first introduction to Sailor Moon. And yes, this version did help to popularize anime. Okay, she was, Cinema was not the only one because there was Dragon Ball and Dragon Ball Z, and that did help out too, of course. These two franchises, Dragon Ball and Sailor Moon, really helped out. There was, there was like Inuyasha, for one, and there was like quite a few others, actually. That was a part of this anime boom from way back when. Like part of the, part of the certain time period and whatnot. And, um, yeah, it's like a whole, this, even this alone right here, what I'm saying, but what helped to popularize anime could actually be a topic of its own when you think about it. <sighs> All right, let me just like I said, I just want to wrap things up because this, this wow, this was awful. I mean, there's still quite a few all things I want to talk about when it comes to this version of the show. Again, it's season three, Cinnamon S. Cinnamon S, the bastard version, it's downright god awful. It's really awful. <sighs> Again, like I said, it's not as terrible as the first two seasons, but it's still pretty damn bad. Anyway, folks, I guess I said, let me just leave it here, I guess. Because this video has gone long enough, and at least I feel like it has anyway. Just, yeah, I'm, I'm really feeling like I'm coming up with a negative Nancy. Okay, to be felt like that stopped me before. 
need really because he hasn't. Anyway, just whatever. I, I don't I don't want to talk about this season. It was, it was pretty bad. If I would talk about any other seasons of the bastard versions, if I want to talk about the bastard version of the other show of seasons, I guess I'll get to it when I have the chance, right? I'll get to it when I have the chance. I'm, all right, so throwing it out there. But for for now, for this version of the third season, Sailor Moon S, I'm giving it an overall rating of a 4.7 out of 10. It's a 4.7 out of 10 for me, all right? As always, thanks for watching, and take care. Until next time, see ya. Oh, yeah, later. Just, wow, what's a, what a colossal mess this was. Oh. And here I am going to Wendy's. And fuck it, why not at this point? Whatever. My head hurts.